What's up, Kosova? This is Coach Q. I'm your host for the upcoming podcast called Never the Right Time. We are on on every Tuesdays, 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 103.5, 105.5 Urban FM. We're going to be talking all things around health, fitness, lifestyle. Please check us out. Here's a quick shout out to our sponsors, Five Star Fitness and Onze Recovery. Five Star Fitness goes without saying we need to be active nowadays. It's a must. And to help with this, Five Star Fitness, with locations across the country, has established itself as the place to pursue your fitness goals. Now, Onze Recovery, let's talk about stress from daily life, leaving us depleted in need of that reboot. Onza Recovery offers different types of therapies to help you recover from the daily stresses, especially when we are limited with time. Hello, Kosova. What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Never the Right Time with Coach Q. And this is on Urban FM, 103.5, 105.5 FM. Shout out to our sponsors, Menda, Five Star Fitness, and Onze Recovery. Today's episode, I'm going to be sitting down with, well, I am actually already sitting down, but <laughs> I'm sitting down with Marika Nikche. Yeah. I hope I got it right. Yep. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so she, well, she, you came across uh, my feed initially because I think you curated a playlist of music yeah, uh, for Urban FM. Mm-hmm. And then uh, upon looking further, realized that you are the youngest uh summiter or climber of the seven peaks yes i'm the youngest girl who climbed the yeah. seven highest so um well let's already start with a brief introduction of like what you do where you do it at um and i know this is like a, a, a like there's multiple answers to this because yeah. um we've had a brief chat outside of the studio where yes certainly about your climbing your mm-hmm. adventures but then also you know when you're not climbing yeah you have a completely different side in terms of, well, you're studying to become a lawyer as well as also, you know, you run or are the face of multiple organizations, right? Yeah. So um, probably not going to be a brief introduction, but that's cool. We got, you know, plenty of time to talk about uh, what you're up to. So yeah, if you could maybe just uh, um, introduce yourself. Okay. I'm not saying my name because you already know. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe um, properly pronounce it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am Rika. Um, I'm the youngest girl in the world who climbed the seven highest mountains of each continent uh, at the age of 17. Um, I climbed it all together with my uh, father. And we are the first Albanian people who climbed it. So, But I always forget to say that. But it's fine. Um, I'm studying law right now. And I also have my own... Um, a company, tour operator company, which organizes uh, different climbs in Kosovo or hiking tours, yoga retreats and hiking retreats. Uh, so I'm all over the place, to be honest. So, mm. yeah. So in terms of like, well, let's dive in for, for with with the climbing aspect. Mm-hmm. And I know we, we touched upon this um, before already a little bit, okay. but sort of like... Because you're 22 right now, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And this, like, in terms of summiting all these, the seven peaks, this took place 16, 17, was uh, it? No, it was 19, 2019. Uh, uh, but you were uh, 15, yes, yes, yes. 16 years when old? When I was training, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, 15, yes. So okay, how did that, like, at such an early age, right? Um, I mean, it's one thing to get into climbing, hiking. Yes. But like, if you could maybe kind of take us through that that journey of like, and I know your father played a big role yeah. in this as well. Uh, well, your whole family, I guess, right? Yeah. We, um, I trained karate for ten years, so I was always training, uh, and then I was a skier. I'm still a skier. So I always liked mountains. My dad, he's a lawyer, but he also likes. Uh, mountain so he took me with him uh, when he went hiking or like just you know go on the nature and stuff and then I just I just felt good being on the mountains and I'm like okay let's just you know like climb this mountain and then that mountain mm-hmm. so I started climbing uh, 
not the highest mountains of Kosovo, but just like, you know, a few mountains here and there. Mm. And then I was like, mm, let's climb the highest peak in Kosovo. Let's climb the highest peak in Albania. Let's climb the highest peak here and there. And mm. uh, for one moment, I just uh, call myself uh, searching for Mont Blanc, like yes. in Gran Paradiso. Mm -hmm. And then I think my dad he heard my thoughts so he was like <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. know he was like, and he was like um, do you want to go and climb Gran Paradiso and Mont Blanc I'm like yeah sure why not you mm -hmm. know and then I think there started the, everything with climbing the highest mountains even though I didn't climb Gran Paradiso and Mont Blanc because I was 15 at the time mm. so I failed because of the bad weather and uh, altitude sickness I couldn't my body couldn't take it because that would have been the highest at that point for you, yes, right? Too. Yes, because the highest for me it was almost 3,000 meters. And Gran Paradiso and uh, Mont Blanc are almost like 5,000 something. Yeah. They are like 4,000 something, but... Yeah, like 4,800 or something. Yes, but for me it was too much. So. Well, someone's probably going to fact check me there. I don't know if it's 4,800. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's lower. It's but 5, yeah, 000, yes. right? it's, yeah. It's high. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> we know nothing. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't summit them, the, those mountains, and uh, I thought that my career, you know, is over without even beginning. So, so already at this point, like it's funny you you mentioned career. Did like that was really what you wanted to like? Yes. The interest was strong enough that yes. you yes. Okay. Uh, because being on the mountains for me, it was being my whole self, like hundred percent. Like I felt mm. good when I was on the mountain. I still feel good when I'm on the mountains. Mm. Um, I can do anything, uh, like everything without being judged and stuff, you know. And I, that kind of feels nice. And I know I'm doing something good for my body, for my mind, for my health. Uh, so I just, I thought it as a career at the time. But okay. now I do and I don't. <laughs> yeah. But for me, it was uh, a huge thing back then to okay. climb those peaks. And then, should I continue with Kilimanjaro? Because that's yeah, my absolutely. <laughs> this, let's just then, dive in. Okay. Yeah. And then after, um, after not summiting the peaks, I was devastated. I was like broken. I'm like, I'm never going out. I'm never like hiking or climbing big peaks, mm. blah, blah, blah. And then after uh, almost a year, yes, yeah, so a year, my dad, he was like, let's go and climb the highest peak in Africa, Kilimanjaro, like the Uhuru yeah. Peak. And I was like, uh, I don't know. But I was like 16 at that time. So for me, it was cool to go, you know, to Africa and like visit the place, post something on social media yeah. and stuff. I didn't think about the mountain at all, to be honest. Mm. But then um, after we started like hiking and climbing the peak, uh, it was so beautiful. Yeah. But it was so tough for me as well. Um, I don't remember uh, the summit day because... Uh, my uh, blood, blood pressure was too low. I was uh, vomiting all the time, headache. So was this like out you were suffering from altitude uh, yes, sickness again? Yes, like body temperature was like 40, 41. It was crazy. Wow. I don't, re I know, I don't remember the 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 sunny day. And then I remember everyone telling me that I should go back. Yeah, like you it's know? also a huge I risk, know. right? So, but I didn't want to go back. So. Okay. I continued climbing and then when I summited the peak, um, it was so beautiful. So for me, it was that, that, that point when I thought, what if I see the sun, you know, the sunrise from the highest peaks of all uh, continents and then, yeah. So that, that was the, the, the birth or the yes, origin of like, okay, maybe this Kilim project of... Yeah, summiting Kilimanjaro, but I don't know, uh, I could be the youngest uh girl to climb okay so like upon doing a little bit more research yes, you found I, out oh there's yes. this maybe added kind of challenge of yes. doing it yep. but while you were like climbing up Kilimanjaro was it also I mean probably there was times where um, were you reflecting on sort of Mont Blanc a little bit where it was getting tough like oh no no, no. okay um, but it's like so but when you kind of encountered the sort of those tough moments of okay. like suffering from altitude sickness like what was going through your your mind like mm, I don't think I could think something at the time <laughs> I guess it was just like, like survival yes but. let me just I just want to breathe and I don't uh -huh. want to have all this you know this yeah. pain and everywhere in my in my body 
um, but I think you just have to like be consistent and to know where to turn back you know where to go back because sometimes it can be too risky for you because mm -hmm. a lot of people die because of altitude sickness mm -hmm. so you just have to know you know when to go back and yeah. I was think at that time like when but you're when, so young as well right I, like so I know yeah I'm not saying what I wanted to say okay it's fine um uh I just think that uh I wanted to summit the peak so bad that I didn't think okay about anything so for me it was my goal to summit the peak and I did because uh while summiting <clears throat> uh Kilimanjaro I didn't know to come back without summiting so okay I just went for yeah. it so already like yeah there was this like instilled kind of you know determination yes. that you were you were gonna do it right yeah one thing that already at such a young age like this is probably something that a lot of us take for granted or like when we just go hiking it's kind of very much there's there's no pressure kind of you know but even in hiking situations and like it doesn't even have to be the tallest of peaks right like that you know the weather like nature doesn't yes. care That's right true. yeah and nature will dictate yeah. a whole different story like you know yeah. so like there's a lot of literal elements that are out of your control that's true right and so already probably like you know maybe even before mont blanc you you mm -hmm. experience like you know a change yeah. of the weather and all of a sudden like it's from dry to wet or yes. a drop in the temperature or these kind of things like what was that i mean it's but it's just the magnitude of these kind of um changes just gets multiplied so much more the higher yes. i guess you go and like from mont blanc to kilimanjaro like yes. it, so what, what like the you know how how is that like to i mean you have to just be able to adapt on on yes. the fly almost right yes. like i mean there's a lot of preparation that goes into these these expeditions or adventures yes. to begin with right which yeah. people i think don't know as well right um <clears throat> that's true um and you also should be you have to be efficient Mm. hiking and climbing in different kind of weather so it can be too hot and all of a sudden it can be like snowing so hard and then like huge winds and stuff or the other way around so you just have you you, you should know how to be efficient you must be efficient mm -hmm. to be uh, more precise um, I think that experience it's one thing that you learn how to deal with the weather and the change mm. weather on the mountains um, I usually um, tell people or advise people not to you know some when people go and climb peaks in Kosovo mm -hmm. they are not too high but still uh, they're like oh, I'm not taking gloves or I don't need uh, like a warm jacket and stuff because it's summer you know, I'm like, you never you know. Yeah, right. I, right? You, you shouldn't do that. I always have my my backpack is full of jackets. Okay, like it's different layers, huh? Different. Like you should you should have your like the hard shell, the puffy jacket, like the third layer, and everything. So you have to be prepared for if you lose one of the you know the mm. jackets and stuff, you should have the other one. So you should be prepared to. Um, to adapt to weather in, in on the mm. mountains. It's one of those where it's like you'd rather have it than not. Not right? have it. Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Um, there is this saying in Albania, but I don't know how to say it in English, so I'm not saying it at all. But it is. Kind of <laughs> 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 it is like. Um, Leave us in suspense, there. <laughs> no, it's like someone who, like, uh, have more clothes or stuff than he or she. Uh, doesn't need he do, I don't know it's fine it's better to have it not than not to have it it's okay, but, the, well, just just like well, what is the expression to, <laughs> though just in Albania in how? Albania um, kushbon skon okay so I don't know how to all right well, my, uh, well we know I it just, at least in Albania okay and then, yeah uh, well you know we can google it or ask okay uh, um, ask around to for the actual translation so when you then going back to uh, Kilimanjaro like then the uh, the idea of like okay this project seven peaks yeah. let's do this yeah. what where do you start you know in terms of uh the preparation to and also yeah. uh you know maybe we'll go into a little bit more detail of like you know the order for example like because it's 
the logistical side is a project in itself, right? Yes, that's true. And then you, I guess, made it almost it's double as challenging if you can say that because then for you there was a bit of a time constraint, right? Yes. Because you you're like, all right, I'm gonna break this record. Yeah, and I didn't have time to. <laughs> so how much? So oh, I, from I, the, from the from when you decided, yeah, what was there was a clock. Running yes, right. Yeah. So how what what time frame it are we talking about again? After submitting Kilimanjaro, I had nine months to submit all of the peaks, and it usually take five to uh, to ten years to submit these peaks because. And it's, Kilimanjaro counted. Uh, in those months, no. After like I I submitted Kilimanjaro in um, January twenty eighteen. But it's for actually maybe we'll take a step back for the seven peaks. Yes. Let's explain that because you had to you had to teach me that because I okay. I, um, I initially thought the seven peaks were like the eight, seven eight thousand meter or something, but that's no, different. That's different. It's the highest peak in all continents. Okay. So the highest peak in uh, Asia, the highest peak in uh, North America, South America, Europe, Antarctica, mm. Africa, and I don't know yeah, and in Indonesia as well, like the ocean. Asia, uh, Asia yeah. Pacific. Yeah. So Africa was is the tallest peak. In in uh, 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 Kilimanjaro is the uh, the um, highest peak in Africa. Okay, so then you you did one already. Yes. And in, then the six you had nine months to do the remaining six. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I did it. Uh, uh, Kilimanjaro submitted in um, January 2018, and then I was like preparing for and contacting people. Mm -hmm to climb the peaks and stuff because I didn't have time. So the first peak after Kilimanjaro, it was Vincent in Antarctica. So it was in <gasps> December 2018. I know from Kilimanjaro wow. going to Antarctica. Wow. I know. Yeah. And from there, I just was on the mountains all the time. I didn't go back home at all. I was just yeah. like summiting peaks and stuff. But it was it was kind of hard uh, because... Because uh, all of these are also like... They're different kind of terrains and everything. Yes. But for example, in Antarctica, it's all white. It's all icy, like glaciers everywhere. So that's a certain type of climbing too, right? Yes. Like even the, the, the equipments are different sometimes. Yeah. And um, the the way you climb, the way you do stuff, it's all different. For example, in Antarctica, you had to carry the feces with you like up and down and you had to bring them to Punta Arena's bag because um the the continent it's so clean and they want yeah. to keep it clean which is so good sure so you have to like carry everything you have to be careful how you leave the continent the place you've climbed yeah um all of those things and one thing that happened in antarctica was that we got stuck for like 11 days in base camp because of bad weather mm. so being stuck in antarctica minus 40 degrees every day uh, without proper food, without food at all, uh, it was kind of a challenge uh, itself, you know, because yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't know if you're going to survive or not because there is no one uh, that can come and get you from there because Antarctica has its own base camp, Union yeah. Glacier. And then from there, there are some like small planes that fly you into a Vincent base camp uh, mm. or like South Pole to the penguins or, you know, you sure. different because Antarctica is huge. Yeah. So the weather should be good in base camp, like the Union Glacier and the base camp where we are to come and get you. So the weather wasn't good and they couldn't come. So we got stuck there and we didn't know like if the weather... Would, yeah, you, yes, it's and a then, waiting game, I guess. Right, and then the season was like, you know, coming to an end mm -hmm. and that was kind of kind of stressful um so the main thing there it was to to be positive and try to be optimistic and stuff because like oh no, no. Mm. but it was it was tough for me after kilimanjaro um <laughs> it's like already like, like biggest like, challenge yeah so i'm like well, what the hell am i doing here <laughs> and and you, uh, you you mentioned your father was obviously there the whole yes. time throughout all this this uh, uh the whole the project yes. how big was the team was it just you two no. For uh, different peaks, you had different... Different, yes. Yeah. Different teams from different peaks. We climbed uh, the seven summits with this company. 
uh, called Climbing the Seven Summits. They are like an American company because you can go alone in some peaks, not in all of them. Mm-hmm. But my dad, having her daughter as a 17-year-old there, he didn't want to risk it and go by, it, by himself and me without a guide and someone mm-hmm. to, you know. It's better to be a group because you help each other than go there alone. Yeah. And he thought it's better to have something, someone with me than go just, you know, with her. Yeah. So we climbed them with with climbing the seven summit, everything. So the 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 groups, um, it's different, you know. Okay. From peaks to peaks, it's just specialists that know that the specifically Antarctica versus, uh, you know. Yes. The, For the... example, to go in Antarctica and Denali, you have to go with. Um, they are. Um, uh, for example, like four to five companies that are like specialized for that thing, and they yeah. have the cer- certificate and stuff. So you have to go with them. Yeah. If you want to summit the the peak, oh, you cannot. Okay. Yeah, you cannot yeah. go alone. So. And that probably also like helps them manage the from an environmental yes. aspect as well, yeah. and kind of. Okay. Yes. So. So, you managed to summit the peak in Antarctica. Yeah. And then. I mean, already like 11 days, but 11 days out of the nine months, kind of, right? The clock is ticking. So then after that, where do you go? Um, We went to Aconcagua in South America. I never talked about that. Oh, because logistic, I guess that's the closest one. So it's like, all right, let's. It is the season. You have to, it is the season for each mountain. Oh, okay. So even that. I had to go in December in Antarctica because it was the season in Antarctica in December. Okay. So, um. February, January, February, it was in Aconcagua. Everest, it was in April. So you have to, you know, uh, adapt to the season of the peaks. Okay. Yes. So then South, South America, like, <laughs> yeah. and how, how high was this? Uh, Almost 7,000 meters. So this is the highest one yet. Yes. Right? Without of... oxygen. Without... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> wow. Uh, and what were there, I mean, it's an obvious super challenge but were there any kind of hiccups to that one uh um it was i never talk about it i don't know i mean hiccup sounds cute it's not at all a hiccup (laughs) (laughs) it's like (laughs) like life or death basically um a concagua it can be too hot and too cold for like this quick Oh, okay. Yes, so it can be from plus 30 to minus 20 in 10 minutes and you're in the same location. Yes. Wow. Okay. So there were times that uh, the tents got broken because of the wind. So okay. you, you have to know how to, you cannot unbroke a tent, but still you have to figure it out what to do with that tent or, sure. you, you know, like to try and make it protected yes, or if you can repair anything. Kind yes, of. because you, or you, because the Concagua is a rocky mountain. <sighs> Uh, so you take rocks from everywhere and just you just put it like around the tent, like walls to, to protect create it. A, yes, a bit of from, a shelter. Yes, kind of. from the winds and stuff. Yeah. But like sometimes they just broke. Um, uh, we couldn't like it was too cold in 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 a Concagua, mm-hmm. and also it was too high. So the oxygen was low. We were cold all the time. Yeah. Um, it was hard now that I'm talking about it. And some people, like right now is the season. So yesterday, five years ago, I submitted Aconcagua. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So, um, but it, it was a tough one. So it was on Independence Day yes. as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it was tough because you have to carry everything by yourself there. You can, uh, you can pay someone to help you mm-hmm. out. Uh, but for us, it was too expensive because... <laughs> Uh, my dad, he managed to cover everything by himself and for two people and climbing and hiking as a sport is too expensive. Like it is expensive. Sure. The equipments. Uh, just getting to the p- just, these places, right? right? You know, like the yeah. plane tickets from going from Kosovo to like America or Alaska, like, you know, you name it. Yeah, yeah. And it it's is. not like even, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, it's not like you're just going to the capital city from there, like yeah. where where the major flights are going to fly into, right? You, you're going into these remote areas, right? Yes. Okay. Just out of curiosity, in terms of... Huh? <laughs> Little intermittent pause there, but... Um, so then, in terms of... Uh, 
Actually, one one question that I was uh, thinking of is sort of, I guess probably each summit it's a bit different, but on average, like so, you mentioned you 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 know you guys were carrying your own stuff, right? Yes. How heavy is that bag? Uh, the heaviest bag I've I've carried was forty three kilograms. Okay. Plus, I was pulling a sled. Uh, oh, so this is Denali. In Den- yeah. yes. It, okay. But in Aconcagua, it was like thirty five or something. Yeah, it's not like. You know your average backpack, right? Okay. And you have everything. everything and then in again, you, yeah. going back to sort of how you mentioned, you have to be super efficient, like the way you pack things, right? Oh, like yes. certain things have to be immediately accessible versus yes, not. That's, yeah, you should know how to pack. Definitely. Okay, and you're also doing it in these extreme but, conditions, yes. right? Like that's why I say climbing uh, these peaks is is uh, mentally challenging because um, you are wearing like puffy jackets. Uh, like everything you have a lot of things with you plus you have like the equipment the harness like the mm. um, the carabiners the ascender and all of the things and then it is uh, 5,000 you know meters you you cannot breathe probably and then sometimes it's windy sometimes it's raining sometimes it's snowing and you just like you know like mm. hard then sort of that's why you should that's the moment when you have to be like calm and go climbing and not to be like oh this is so you know annoying and blah 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 yeah because it doesn't so, serve you at all like i mean the more you panic the, the worse it's going to be yes, right yes but that's what people tend to do because they are scared and like you know they don't know what to do or they don't have that calm calmness inside of them so so is that something that you trained for or like it's part of your demeanor? Like, and I, I would imagine like, you know, once you did Kilimanjaro, there's probably a boost of confidence, right? Like yes. I did it. I fought through a bit of adversity, yeah. right? And then Antarctica, again, you faced a different kind of adversity. You managed, yes. right? Being able to like, okay, stuck at base camp for 11 days yeah. like minus 40 like no food these kind of things right yeah. and then uh, uh how do you pronounce the uh aconcagua aconcagua i think <laughs> it's a bit of i a think i'm pronouncing it okay aconcagua aconcagua yes. uh then you you summited that yeah and then again that's probably like all right i can do this because that's the tallest one at that point right? yeah yeah and then it was like, everest Everest was after, so yeah. this is like the, fourth one. the crown jewel. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're all in their own right, but then Everest is the one that I guess everyone, I mean, yeah. tries to do it, right? Yeah, like so, the biggest one and like the highest in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, you know, in terms of let's let's talk a little bit about your training, and then we'll go back into like conquering all the uh, the other yeah. uh, summits. But I mean, it's one thing if you have in your sort of backyard a little bit more okay. you know the the altitude right that's mm-hmm. part something that you kind of need to do as well right altitude yeah. training um even you know training in different conditions right whether it's like the the ice versus snow to like yeah. the you know those minus temperatures right yeah um to be honest i didn't have a training plan or like uh i know you mentioned plan. like it was quite uh spontaneous <laughs> yeah which is wild like but i, know. I mean you you still trained right so yes like yes. what well, maybe if you can share a little bit of like what you did um what i find the best for me uh for training it was like going hiking with a heavy backpack because that is what you will do when you're mm. hiking and climbing you know you will mm. be on the mountains with a heavy backpack so um i remember i was waking up at five every day just to go up climbing for like two hours hiking for like two hours and then with a heavy backpack with it was 25 30 kilos or something mm. and then i was do, i would i was doing a lot of spinning because i, I hate running so i wasn't mm. i didn't run it at all so i was doing spinning hiking on the mountains uh some crossfit you know like strength training mm and these kind of things and i was every weekend i was summiting a peak in kosovo or in Mm. albania okay and i think that is what helped me climbing the other peaks because um 
you just know, you know, how to be on the mountains because you're training on the mountains mm -hmm. and you're there. There were times when it rained a lot while I was training and I was on the mountain. So um, unconsciously, I trained how to walk on the mud, you know, like okay. every like slippery, slip, uh, slippery, yeah, yeah. yes, uh, rocks and this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So. I think that's what helped me climbing the mountains because I was being on the mountains because uh, in, the expedi in the expeditions, there were people who were training inside gyms only, you know, mm. not going on the mountains and they didn't know how to respond to the mountain, you know, yeah, to the those connection. Natural yes. elements, I guess. Yeah, right? th those, those things were missing. And I think for you, me, that yeah. was the best thing I did. Okay. But then like, in terms of the height, the altitude, yes, like, you know, you set up at base camp and then gradually yeah. you acclimatize to, to the altitude. Yeah. But then that's something that I guess you didn't get to do a lot of. No. Right? Uh, I did. There are some tents, hy hypoxic tanks, tents, I think. I don't know if I'm right. Um, Where it's low in oxygen. Yes. Yeah. And people, they do these things. But... I didn't have the tent, <laughs> hmm. so um, I didn't, you know, I didn't train for the altitude, to be honest. I just went for it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know how to train. But but that does that mean, because, so after, you know, you've did Kilimanjaro, then yeah. Antarctica, then South America, and then Everest, and I guess after each summit, you're also picking up these experiences, yes. right? Like Yeah, I think that helped me because I was doing that, like, uh, one by one, it was so fast, so I was um, acclimatized. For, so after Vincent, I was acclimatized to go to Aconcagua. Mm -hmm. And then in Aconcagua, I acclimatized to go to Mount Everest, even though um, I think acclimatization is like allergies. You don't know where you, when, you know, the, mm. the high altitude hits your... Yeah. So, but I think that is what, that is what helped me. Did Being you... Being on the mountains all the time, I'm like, okay. D and did you because like being cautious like did you because some of these peaks like especially i can't i can call what yeah <laughs> thank you or everest like it's the first time being at certain altitudes right yes. for you so would you, did you guys like kind of be a bit more cautious and think all right we're going to spend an extra day at this height or so yes sometimes yeah. yes okay um Usually you go to camp one, camp two, sleep two nights, camp two, and then go back to camp, th go up to camp three. Mm -hmm. And then you see sometimes the weather is bad, so you spend another night, you know? Mm -hmm. But you kind of acclimatize okay. if we're going up. But there are people who didn't summit because of the, you know, the, the high altitude, and that's normal. Yeah. Because it's better to go back than to not go back at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. No one wants it to be a one-way ticket, but that's the harsh reality, right? Yeah. Like, and I think you, you shared also, and maybe we could talk about this as well, like in terms of what you experienced at Mount Everest, right? Yeah. Um, so once you get to uh, base camp uh, mm -hmm. in Nepal, right? Yes. Um, how? So since you kicked off this project, how much time has passed? So uh, I was in March. No. April. So Everest was April, May, two months. So two months since the first, uh, or so, uh, Vincent, it was, uh, December. Yeah. And Everest was April. And then, yeah, you done. And then when did well, Kilimanjaro was when? Uh, Again? it was January, 2018. Vincent was December, 29, 2018 and 2019. Okay. So from December 2018 yeah. until August 2019, I was always on the mountains. So it was like nine months, I think. So because in between these these peaks, you're basically going straight to the next one uh, for the most part. Yes. Example, uh, from Everest, I didn't go back home. I went directly to uh, Denali. Uh -huh. And from Denali, again, didn't go back home. I went directly to Elbrus. And then from Elbrus, I came back home for like 10 days. And then went to climb the final peak. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So then when you got to Everest, like, because this is then the fourth one, right? Yes. Um, what, what did it, again, because Everest is the, is the tallest one, did it, like, was that something, was, was the, you, were you more excited? Did you feel differently about it or? I was so happy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes. Okay. I was so happy there because I got to meet a lot of people, a mm. lot of 
uh, very good climbers that I always wanted to meet, you know. Okay. And like you share experiences with other people, like you kind of know what they're saying, and they they can under- you understand them, they understand you, mm. and then the teamwork it is on point. <laughs> so mm. you ha- you just help each other. You try to help each other. Yeah. Uh, you try to save each other's life, and it is challenging. So. Is that a lot one, of adren- adrenaline? Yeah, so yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. Uh, it, um, in terms of the uh, like Everest, because I think it's it, would you say it's probably one of the most established ones because it's it's become popular now, right? People are, more and more people are trying to to climb it. Com- yeah, kind of com- the the season that I was in 2019, there was uh, someone posted a photograph of Summit uh, Day. Yes, this famous one where they're yes. lining up. Yes, like the crowds and Everest and stuff. But in that season, I wasn't in this in that crowd. Okay. And I'll explain why later. Yeah. <laughs> um, because of the people have money and they pay and you go and summit. Hmm. But in that season, 11 people died in Everest because of people they weren't they they weren't trained enough to climb mm-hmm. <clears throat> so they paid money and because they paid money someone else died why is that because they pay oxygen oh, so yes. they There's, pay mm. they pay oxygen and um resources are it's there's a fi- like i guess a set amount yes. of certain things right and yes. oxygen those oxygen it's, bottles yeah it's the main thing when you're on a rest uh Okay, avalanches and all of these things, they are important, but uh, also the oxygen is really important. So people who have money, they buy oxygen and people who don't have the money to buy the extra oxygen, they got, they, they get stuck behind them because you cannot pass on Everest. Mm-hmm. So I ran out of oxygen and I don't have an, an extra bottle. And the person before me, he has or she has like, you know, the, the extra bottle. So I die because I don't have the oxygen. And you are slow because you are not trained enough. Mm-hmm. I'm trained, but I, you know, and when I, you I s- guess slow because of you. And that's why people... And because it's so, I guess, I mean, dangerous and also um, challenging. Like you say, you can't pass. Yes, Because there's can't. there's only a limit. There's like yes. the path only is for one person at a yes, time kind of. Yeah, because you are clipped to one rope. Wow. All the time. And okay. you cannot, you cannot pass. And, um, and I, so a lot of these like 11 people for maybe different reasons, but yes. a num- good number of them is they ran out of oxygen. Yeah. So, wow. And I think from, from that season, they put this, uh, like, uh, do you say criteria? Uh, f- like, for someone to be able to climb? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have to have experience. Uh, you have to have climbed like on... Uh, six or seven thousand uh, uh, meter like peak. I, yeah, yes, okay. you have to like have an experience to mm-hmm. give you the permit to climb Mount okay. Everest, which is really good because hopefully it won't have. That, oh, that's so surprising yeah. that it wasn't until that year. I know it w- like there wasn't s- yeah, something, but that was like the crowdest year ever. Okay, um, Everest Base Camp is the <laughs> the biggest uh, base camp in the world. So how big uh, is it? Around a thousand people live. Oh, so in it's Everest. like a small village then. It's yes, like, yeah. live in Everest Base Camp for like two months. Um, porters, uh, cooks, like climbers, guides, everyone. Yeah. Around a thousand people. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, okay. is, it is a huge base camp. So that was probably <laughs> yeah. already an experience when you got to, to base camp. Yes. And then I guess I, I, I can imagine like naturally there is this excitement. You're like, all right, this is... Yeah. There's, I mean, the community is is right in front of you almost, right? Um, and then I guess you you explained that you weren't part of that where that famous photo was published. I think it was Nimza, right? I think the uh, the I Nepalese Sherpa that so. or Nepalese uh, climber that might have taken a photo of Probably. that. Probably, but I think uh, Alan Arna, There is this climber who posted it. Okay. And it went viral because like he gives he's like the someone who tells everything what is happening in the mountains. Uh-huh. So I think when he posted that he Okay. You know, everyone knew what was happening on Everest. I wasn't part of that photo because uh, our oxygen bottle got stolen 
<laughs> so that also happens. Yes, it happens. Wow. Yes. And, uh, okay. So then, without that, you you couldn't climb. Yeah. It is so funny because I climbed Mount Everest with only one rotation, so I did only one. Um, I acclimatized only once. Uh, I got sick, and I couldn't do the second rotation. So basically, what the rotation is, you go back, you go from base camp to camp one, sleep one night, go back to you know mm -hmm. base camp, and then the second rotation is you go to camp one, camp two, sleep camp two. So stage is going just higher. To, yeah, and just then, to acclimatize, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you should do that because Everest is eight thousand, almost nine thousand meters, eight thousand yeah. eight hundred forty or something like that, and then. Yeah. I I couldn't do the second one because I was sick, so I had to stay at base camp. So so you got uh, altitude sickness? E Is no, I I I think I got I got this bacteria. I don't know from the food. I think so. I was <laughs> out I, of all the things. I know. Wow. I know. Okay. I know. And then I had to rest on base camp because you cannot, yeah. like, your body cannot recover when you are in a high altitude. So yeah. I had to stay in base I camp. I mean, it's already a stressful situation, right? Yes. So and then okay. I get better and we start going for the summit day because when you summit Everest, you have this window to summit, which is like two days or one day that it is a good weather that everyone and goes. And this is out the of the summit. whole year, right? Yes, out of the whole year. So <clears throat> we, we go for it and it was three teams. So team A and team B were in that zone, camp four, 8,000 meters. And we were in camp two. So they were trying to summit on 28th and we were trying to summit in... No, they were trying to summit on 25th and we, we were trying to summit on 26th. So when they were there, they searched for the oxygen bottles and there were, you know, no oxygen bottles. So we had to send them our oxygen bottles because they were, they were in that zone. Yeah. So. As, a, as part of the same team, you're like, yes, all right. Yes, you have to because yeah. we were in camp two and we could survive, survive without the oxygen. Which isn't also like just an easy thing to do, right? Like You are in almost 7,000 meters in camp yeah, two. But they're like... It is not because like you pay a lot of money, first of all. Yeah. And uh, for me, it, was the, it wasn't the money. It was the whole project because if I didn't summit Everest that year... Like, I wouldn't be the youngest anymore, you know? So, <laughs> oh so I had to summit that yeah, yeah, year. Like, I had to. And then we did, like, we, we sent them our oxygen bottles. Mm -hmm. And we were waiting for someone to bring us oxygen bottles to find other oxygen bottles. So everyone summited Mount Everest. And we were waiting them in camp two and congratulating them. Mm. Congratulations. Yeah. I did a summit because I don't have the oxygen, you know, the yeah. oxygen and stuff, but we were like optimistic. Sure. So we find the oxygen and we try to summit, but the season is almost over. Mm. Uh, Kumbu Icefall doctors, they went home. Like everyone is home. No one is there. Uh, the glacier starts to melt. Like the anchors are not anchored anymore because the the the, the glacier is melting, so yeah. they're not. It's not strong enough. So, so it's, it's it's like a really dangerous situation. It is, yes. Kinda. And uh, they said that twenty seventh of May may be the best or the worst day of the like you know day of the season. An extra day, maybe. Yes, kind of. but it can be the worst or the best. We don't know yet. Oh. And it turned out to be the best day of the season, and it was only us. Um, on mm. on the summit so it was only on my team our team mm. uh, i think we were like seven or eight people mm -hmm. i don't remember and we stayed 40 minutes yeah i remember you telling me this yes. uh when we had um our, our previous chat and like so what, what was the average time usually how long do people get to stay up three on the to peak? five minutes <laughs> so it's not a long time right three basically to three minutes. to five minutes yeah. to kind of and it, what soak in the sunrise and then because it's so popular especially like there's people behind you right that yes. it's like all right you have to move or the weather can be bad as well yeah and uh to climb everest it takes uh from from like the last camp to the summit it takes nine to twelve hours just to climb up okay even though it's 1.8 kilometer yeah but uh you like you have to be quick to go back to camp four because if the bad weather catches you up up yeah. there you're screwed so so uh, it, almost the challenge going down right is the it is yeah 
going up is yes, it's it really is. hard and and you know you summit it, yes. but then yeah, you still have to go back down. The most injuries happens coming back down because uh, people are tired. Mm-hmm. They think they summited the peak and now you know everything is We done. Can just chill, even though like. <laughs> yeah, even though for me summit is just the halfway to the summit. Even though I'm in the summit because I have to go back. You know, I don't think, ah, oh, I summit in that now everything is fine. You have to be quick. You have to be, even though you're tired, you have still to manage yourself to be not, <laughs> you're not tired, you know? Yeah, yeah. You ha- because most injuries happens while coming back. Um, I mean, injuries equals death yes. also, right? <laughs> For yes. the most part, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, okay, wow. So then, I mean, you got to spend 40 minutes, did you say? Yes, because we were waiting for like the other half of the like the other part of the team Uh so we could stay 40 minutes and hopefully the weather was good and we could manage not to get too cold even though after after 30 minutes it was too cold for us to stay on the summit yeah and the oxygen and you know yeah you it's like okay great you got it but you're also you're using resources at the same time right uh And maybe even 30, 40 minutes, like just it kind of soaking much, it yeah. in, like your body start, like you want to stay kind of warm because you know, you, yeah. the intensity is going to be yes. so like, it's going to be ramped up immediately the moment you start your descent, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. And one thing that happened to me on Everest, uh, summer day, my oxygen mask, it froze. Okay. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> well, okay. So... Like, Like, There is the oxygen mask, I mean, like it has the pipe to the oxygen, Yeah. the one for, you know, when you like breathe out mm-hmm. and the other one is you take the little oxygen, which is outside. Uh-huh. So the whole thing is just a mess Yeah. and it froze. Okay. I don't know how, but I know it froze. And I remember I was uh, uh, climbing up and I was like trying to breathe. And but it's not working. It's not working. And I was trying to take off my oxygen mask to breathe. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And I'm like, and I couldn't breathe, you know, because there was no oxygen up there. And I don't know what I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, I got a little bit scared, you know, like I kind yeah. of started panicking because I couldn't breathe. Um, and then it was Sherpa with me and I was telling him, I cannot breathe. My, you know, my mask is frozen. And he was like, Woohoo, that's okay. I'm like, it's not okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not I'm not feeling good. And then they had to help me with um the knife to like cut off the eyes and stuff to to breathe better, to start breathe better. But that was uh not a good moment. Yeah, and this moment, how long was it last? It must have felt forever. It was like 15 minutes, 20. And you're barely like I know. <laughs> I wow. know. Wow. Are, are the Sherpas also like, are they using oxygen? Yes, okay. they have to. Even though there are some, uh, uh, like the highest village that Sherpa live, uh, it is 4,000 meters. Okay. So they used to lack of oxygen. Mm. Uh, and some of them, they can climb Everest without, without because, oxygen. Because there's also Very oxygen cool. with oxygen and without, right? Yes. Is kind of a um, like a, 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 huge, a feat yes. to do, right? Yeah. yeah. They can, but because they are working, they cannot climb without oxygen because when you, they, they don't think, you know. They can't be a risk, right? Yes. They, they need to be, if right. anything, they're helping climbers, yeah. right? Get through it. Right? Yes. Like they're, they're leading the way. And then if they are without oxygen, like they cannot think good. Mm. Uh, and it just not, it, it, it is too risky okay. for them and for the people to climb without. And then I remember you saying like, I mean, there's just so much to, to talk about here. <laughs> but, I know. But like, because you're on this time schedule, right? Like mm-hmm. you also did something very rare in the sense that you went immediately down, right? Yes. Like usually it's, again, these things are step by step. Kind yes. Of. I had to go down because I had to catch the plane to go <laughs> to Denali. <laughs> like crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you did this uh, like straight down, right? Yes. Basically to base camp. When you go to, um, so you go from camp three to camp four in one day. So you just rest for a few hours in camp four. And then at 9 p.m. you start to climb to the peak, the summit. And then after the summit, you're supposed to spend one night in camp four. And then one night in camp two, and then base camp. 
So we submitted uh, the peak, we went back to camp four, we just packed our thing and went directly to camp two. So we did from camp three to camp four, camp four to summit, summit to camp two in 24 hours. Because we had to catch the plane. But I'm just thinking already like physically, how much work Exhausting. was Exhausting. Because that's like basically nonstop climbing, right? Yes, and I have this photo while, while I was rappelling down. So you rappel, you know? And um, my dad, he photographed me and I was like, when I was changing the device from one rope to the other rope, I was just sitting in the ice and like I couldn't do it standing up. Like while I was standing, I had to sit and then to change the device because I was... Well, I mean, what's what's going through your mind? Like, because it's sort of like, you know, we, we briefly kind of... Uh, you know, I don't think we we did your training kind of yeah. uh, like justice in terms of we just kind of skimmed over it. Yeah. Like probably I, I'm sure a lot of work obviously goes into this, yes. but like those kind of situations, right? It's kind of like it's hard to really, really prepare for it yes. unless you you are climbing those peaks yep. of 4,000, 5,000 meters, let's say, right? Yeah. On a regular basis. So like what is going through my mind? Mm. I don't know. I want a hot shower. <laughs> or not even. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually I sing in these kind of moments. You sing? Yes. Okay. And um, I see because I always wanted to be a singer. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. <laughs> Since I was so like, I always wanted to be a singer. So in those moments, I just sing and I see myself like, you know the singer blah 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 and that's how i wow. i mean you're staying through. calm as yes, well okay yeah and i think that's how i go through this these hard times uh -huh. i sing and i interview myself uh i think of different things you know do you have a go-to song no okay i don't <laughs> do you remember what you I were don't. singing at no, that moment i don't know okay. not at all i just remember that i i, I, I like i sang when i was on those mountains but it is sometimes I think one thing I thought one time I remember is why the hell am I here when I could be in front of TV watching TV you know like oh, watching okay. TV eating ice cream in my pajamas yeah and I am here doing this thing like why am I doing this to myself okay so there's a moment that you yes, were actually like and questioning then myself yeah. and my answer was I don't know <laughs> I'm like I don't know uh, and then after I went down, you know, to the tent, and oh. I was like laying in my tent, I just figured that this is what I love. Like okay. putting myself through these challenges, through this adrenaline, and through all of this, it just makes me feel good. Okay. I remember also, um, and this maybe this is a, a bit of a, a sensitive um, topic, but I remember when we first sat down that you had mentioned there was a night where was it going up that you um had a nightmare yeah so i don't know if you're comfortable to talk about that uh but. for me uh it was hard because um uh, not everyone believed that i could summit uh the peaks mm. uh there there was this one person who believed in me uh besides my dad uh, he was some. He was someone so close to us. Unfortunately, he doesn't live anymore. But he was. Um, he said to us, "You're gonna submit everything, and you're gonna finish the project." And the the other people, they were like, "Ah, you won't like you know you won't mm. climb, you won't summit, because you're just like, you know, like this girl. Mm -hmm. you, your dad has the money to send you up, but you're not summiting, and blah blah blah." And I was like damn you know mm. you should you shouldn't say these things to me because i'm just 17 you know yeah like and it's sort of what were were what yeah. did i do to you to begin yes. with right so and then uh my biggest nightmare was not summit not to summit this peak so i was in everest camp too and uh i was just taking a nap obviously and <laughs> as you do <laughs> i don't know you just get tired you just get tired and I, can, I, can only, I can't even imagine so uh, like okay so but uh, those are important <laughs> moments like you need to yes like i mean it's part of the, probably the adapting to the environment too right yeah um 
so then okay so you had this this nightmare like, that i didn't yeah. submit montevra so i remember i I remember because I, I I wrote it down after everything happened, and I read. I, you know, I just sometimes you kept I read. The diary. Yes, and I like to read my diary once sure. in a while, so I know what happened in my nightmare. So I know I was asking my dad to show me the photograph from the summit, and he was telling me we don't have a summit photo, and I'm like, why we don't have a summit photo? He was like, because we didn't summit, you know, the peak, and I was like crying and crying in my sleep mm. and I remember my dad waking me up and telling me like what's wrong what's wrong and yeah. everyone from the camp they came to our tent because I was crying so loud yeah. and I was like I just saw some you know like a uh, dream that we didn't summon the peak and stuff and it was so I felt so bad at that moment mm. and the only thing I wanted to do was to summit the peak obviously yeah. because I wanted to prove people wrong I don't know why I wanted to prove people wrong because uh, in the stage I am right now in life, I don't want to prove people wrong. Like I want to do what I want to do. And if I can do it, it's fine. Like people fail and yeah, you it's, learn it's from failing. On your own terms, right? Yes. But when you are 17, you don't accept, you know, mm. you don't accept that. And you just want to prove them wrong. So for me, it was really important to summit the peaks. And I was conf like, I knew I would summit every peak. I never thought of, um, uh, maybe I won't summit. The only time when I thought I won't summit the peaks was it was in Denali, which is right after Everest. Everest, because yes. okay, so this is the so having to go down Everest in twenty four hours yes. is that like a record or something? Or like, I don't know. No? It's not a record. Oh, okay, but it's it's also like it is fast. Very few people do that, right? Yes. They they it is fast. Yes. Um, and then I think just there was one detail that um, or many details, but <laughs> one of which that stuck out last time we talked was um. To get the certificate, right? You got you have to go back yes. to base camp, right? There's this technicality, right? Yes, you have to go back to base camp climbing down, like on your foot. Because sometimes people summit Everest and they get injured or like they their hands are frozen or something and they have to go back to like the hospital as soon as possible. So there are the helicopters that can fly them from camp two to, you know, come and oh. take them to camp two and then fly them to hospital and stuff. But they don't get the certificate that they oh. summit, even though they were on the summit of Mount Everest. So you have to go from base camp to summit and from summit to base camp on your on your. Feet. But it also just shows how, like, because going down is is so hard as well, right? Yes. Like, okay, so you guys obviously yes. made it to base camp. Yeah, you got your certificate. Yeah, and then straight to, to Denali. Denali. Yeah. Um. And this is the peak number five. Peak number five. Of which then you were saying like this was probably the biggest of all biggest challenge. For me, it was the hardest, definitely, because uh, I was exhausted from uh, like spending two months. Yeah, you don't get to rest, basically, right? Spending two months above 5,000 meters without proper food, you lose uh, muscle mass, you lose energy, you lose you lose fat as well. <laughs> you know, you lose everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're tired and all you want to do is just eat well, sleep well train you know and yeah. do this kind of stuff and in Denali um, you have to carry heavy backpack you have to pull a sled um, so f this was probably the most phys I mean they're all physically demanding but, but Denali was something else hands down you're yeah. like this was it was something else uh, because you have to walk for hours and hours carrying heavy backpacks pulling a, pull, pull a sled and then when you go to the camp you have to dig like for an hour just to set up a tent. Okay. Like you're already tired and you have to like start digging in the snow. What the hell is that? You know, yeah, I just yeah. want to go inside and sleep. That's all I want to do. And you have to dig, you have to like set up the tent inside and out. And then you start, you have to start to cook your food to eat before going to sleep. So it takes... It's just another work you know, it's after like, work after yes, work. Yes. Yeah. And that's what you do. And the thing that we did in Denali, we also, Denali, it takes 21 to 25 days. To summit. Okay. And we summit for we summited for eleven days. <laughs> because we had to catch another flight. <laughs> oh my god. I know. Wow, okay. So you you did it in half the time. Yes. How, so Why which which meant then the pace that you had to go like yes. each day, like maybe someone needs to go X amount, you had to do double or something. Yes, that's that's why that's why it was uh, hard for me because usually people from base they 
they send things from base camp to camp one and then they go back to base camp and then the next day they you know they send mm. the other things to camp one and we didn't have time to do the so the all of that so we did it in in one go like base camp camp one camp one camp two camp two camp three and when it came to go to camp four my body just, it was like nope this was that moment where like you're like uh, you just froze kind of yes. like i just i know i couldn't and then i remember my dad and everyone and, and the guide so it was it was just me and my dad it was me my dad and my guide so my guide said uh let's go back you know to camp three and rest a couple of days and then we can go back and try <laughs> so, so like okay so what's even more impressive is like i just realized like so you did it in 11 12 days but yes. you also rested <laughs> yes like yeah oh god okay wow so all right we went back to camp three to rest and then after two days we start climbing up again and in the exact same place uh-huh i can't <laughs> like okay i try to yeah i can't and then i remember my dad he was like do you want to go back and I'm like, no. And he was like, do you want to go up? I'm like, no. And he was like, what do you want to do? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> Let me just, you know, stay here. Okay. I just, yeah. I didn't want to go back because we've been like, we we already did so much. Mm. And it, like, it was this moment when I had to push my limits, like go beyond everything. And I remember screaming at my dad, like I was seeing things that I shouldn't. <laughs> because he was my dad oh, yeah, yeah, and he was like oh my god like what What do you do because it's also like the time's ticking you can't just stay there yes, either right and then they just decided to all right we're know. gonna we're gonna go yes no they were like you decide oh okay. and they gave me like five to ten minutes to decide what to do and i was just like i just i know i just sat there for a few moments i, I ate a chocolate of course and then i'm like okay let's go now up and wow. that was the moment i pushed my limits and then like that you really had yes. to yeah okay and then i remember going back to, going up to camp four it was exhausting and then we had to summit and then go back but it was it was so it was so bad okay at that point it's i mean you're digging deep you keep pushing up like i mean you when you got to that summit was there like I mean, there's not, there must have been a little bit of relief, but you also know, like, I got to go down now, right? Like, is there, or was At that it... point, I didn't care because I was too tired. Oh, really? like you're just like, I was, right, yes. Just... And I remember I have this photo I was telling yesterday while climbing, while climbing Plastrik. Uh -huh. I was telling this friend of mine, I have a photo in Denali that I never posted it. It is me on the summit, uh, down on my knees. And I just, I had my eye, my eye sags and I was just like, I'm just resting on my eye sags down on my knees because I was like that. Yeah. You yes. couldn't do anything. Yes, more I, I never posted it because I didn't know what to say about that photo because I have mixed feelings because I was feeling happy, sad. I was angry. I was tired, you know, or like I was feeling everything and I'm like, oh, I just won't. <sighs> wow. I wouldn't like people to see that photo. I don't know why. But yes, well, it's, it's it's probably so. I mean, it's if anything depicts like, you know, a vulnerable moment. That's probably yeah. that would be it, right? Yeah. I guess like. Yes. Uh, wow. Okay. And then, um, after summit, after we summited Denali, we had to go back to Camp Four, sleep one night, and from Camp Four, we had to go in one go to base camp again with everything with right everything. this is 45 yes. plus kilos on your back pushing a sled or dragging yes. a sled yes and that was terrible yeah like okay it was so tiring i remember crying out loud when we like when we came to camp one to go to base camp i remember myself crying out loud because of the pain uh I had blisters on my feet everywhere. So they were like covered in blood because of everything. And I couldn't even, you know, like put my feet without hurting. Yeah. And it's like walking on glass kind of yes, thing. Yes. And right. I remember like crying and crying. And 
my dad, he was staying like, uh, I think five to six meters far away from me because we are tied in a rope. Yeah. Because of crevasses, you have to be careful. Uh, and he didn't know what to do, you know, like he didn't know how to help me. And I was just crying and I was calling my mom like, mom, help me. Yeah, because it's also like, <laughs> that's funny. But at the same time, he's on the highest alert because you, you, you know, you, yeah. you need to, you know, and it's like at the same time, probably like he wants to be as close as he can yes, with but you. He, but, but then, he can't. Oh. I know. And it was so hard. And that's why for me, Denali is Denali. And I remember my dad after like few, after a year, uh, there was this friend of mine who tried to summit uh, Denali. And my dad asked me, would you like to go and summit Denali again? If you have the chance to. And I was like, hell yeah, I would go back again. Oh, you would? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Like, yep. Yeah. Even though it was too hard for me, <clears throat> I would go back. Do, okay. You feel like there's there's unfinished business there in some ways? Or do you I want... Know. Is it sort of... I want to suffer again. <laughs> okay. Is it kind of like also... Like, <laughs> do you want to have the last laugh? Do you want to say like Denali this time? You didn't get me? Or? <laughs> no. <clears throat> nope, I don't. Okay. Wow. So you would do it again. Okay. And then you have two more peaks at this point. <laughs> yes. Because there's there's also like a bit of a spoiler. There's another challenge that, I mean, each one poses its own challenge. But I remember you saying on the sixth peak, then like your father gets <laughs> really injured, right? Yes. he. Uh... It's okay. If you need some water, go for it. <clears throat> no, he's just, I think I'm kind of, I don't know why my my, <clears throat> my voice goes away. Okay, um, my dad, uh, he tore his ACL and meniscus because we decided to ski down from Alpers. Mm. <clears throat> so he, he he does these things, he he fell down and he tore his ACL and his meniscus and then uh, we come back in Kosovo and he goes to the, see a doctor and he says, the doctor says, like, you should operate your your knee and he's like I cannot go into operation right now because I have to summit another peak <laughs> because this is the last peak to summit to finish the project and I cannot leave my daughter go uh, in uh, Papua New Guinea alone I mean <clears throat> so as the expression goes the apple doesn't fall far from the tree huh? like it's right. uh, that toughness that grit yeah. like clearly yeah. you were born with it yeah. But like, just to, when you guys decided to ski down, mm -hmm. I mean, when, when this, this accident happened, right? Mm -hmm. Like how far away, like that alone, like, I mean, that's just, again, another situation where like, you know, you, you have, have to improvise, right? It's like, how do you, uh, I remember uh, everyone helping him to go down. Oh, so like the team was, yes, okay. There because was... he had a lot of pain. Um, I had uh, my dad, he... Because um, also, like, you know, trying to already the, staying calm, for example, right? Like, he, oh, he was screaming. At me. He was yelling at me. Oh, my God. It was so funny because I had my GoPro on. And uh, after he fell, we went, like, to him and tried to help him. And he was yelling at me. He was, I don't know why. <laughs> he, was, he was just yelling at me. And after we watched the video, we, we laughed a lot. But we all, like, we mobilized ourselves and tried to help him go back down. And then we gave him some medicine, you know. Like painkillers kind yes, of thing. Yes, and kind of stuff, yeah. Okay. Um, but then, so okay, so then going on to this, like, again, I mean, that's, that's an episode on its own, I think, like, just to understand, like, the the sheer determination that both of you guys had at that point. So then you come back, so you spend a little bit of time here mm -hmm. and then the last peak. is Yes, Karsten's. My dad had a uh, with the, the knee. Yeah. So, so he had like, a, I guess, a brace or something yes. to at least stabilize it. Yeah, yeah. And just, again, the, the last Papua New Guinea, mm. the, the last peak, like how high is this one? Oh, I think it's almost 5,000 meters. 5,000. Yes, but, but it's very technical. So the, the mo one of the most technical. Yes, it is very technical. 
on one leg, your father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. an alien. I wow. call him alien. I mean, and then did you have a, a, a team supporting you there as well? We had, we had a guide with us. So it's a team of three. It's yes. very minimal. Yeah. But then did you... So how much time did you have left? For, because also in this nine-month span, right? Like what? We had like a month. Okay. No, we had... Uh, so the, the, the girl... Um, to whom I broke the rec- the record, it was Samantha Larson. So he he was she was eighteen and something, uh-huh. and I was seventeen. I had time. Okay. But uh, I wanted to finish, you know, as fast as possible. And the 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 day I finished, I summit the uh, I summit Carstens. After like a week or so, they closed the mountain. Oh yes. Because they had. Uh. Uh, Due to like the, it was a political situation, yes, right? So like, they closed the mountain, and yeah. then after that, it was you know COVID nineteen, and then no one summited for like two years or so. Oh wow! Yeah. But like because of, uh, then also due to your father's injury, mm-hmm. did you guys like take it a bit slower? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. It was. No. He was just go. Sometimes he had like there were. Um, um situations and um where the rocks weren't good you know and you have to do this yeah. kind of thing and his knee was hurting him so bad like i could see in his face but he wasn't saying anything uh, but i think because he was trained the muscles you know it helped mm. i don't know the pee not the knee not to like move and stuff okay yeah wow and then sort of when you guys get up right and then of course it's not the end but knowing i mean that moment of the seventh one last one yeah uh, what was the, what what was going through i mean i have a video on summit and um climbing carson's was the only moment when i started to cry like on the summit cuz it's almost that was yeah, that like I just didn't know uh, what was happening because I didn't have time to process mm. peak from the peak because it was so fast. I like I couldn't. Yeah, it's basically all right. I, we, we have yes, a plane we, to catch. Kind right, of thing. I couldn't yeah. celebrate one peak because I had the plane to catch exactly. Yeah. And then uh, on cars, and I was like, oh my god, is this even real? And um, also, I got sick uh, on Carson's, uh, so I wasn't like. You know, thinking mm. and trying to, f- I was just trying to survive. And, uh, but after I went back, I was like, wow, this is huge. You know, the thing that we did is awesome. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of, I was so happy. Yeah. That, I mean, because as much as, I mean, yeah, it's like just the amount of, I mean, it's really like the only way I can kind of like what comes to mind is like what it's such an emotional and physical and like yeah. spiritual kind of like everything like a roller coaster, right? Yes. Like, um, I mean, it takes so much out of you already, mm-hmm. but then, yeah, is it, was it, I mean, it's hard to say, maybe it's a strip, maybe a strange question to ask, but was it all that you expected? to be like did you have any expectations I while you were going through or is sort no, of I didn't I okay. didn't have any expectations to be honest even now I don't know how I felt on the summits I just know I felt proud of myself and proud of my dad and the bond we created mm-hmm. uh, climbing the seven summits because we were 24-7 together yeah and mm-hmm. uh, I know I just felt proud of me and him mm-hmm. and I felt happy uh, and I felt, I don't know, I don't know how I felt at that time. I just know I felt good. I would imagine, I mean, because it was so intense and to do this in like this kind of time frame, like yeah. it's sort of probably, and and we kind of maybe touched upon this uh, when we, when we uh, um, had, a, you know, our previous conversation mm-hmm. where like, you know, you guys are still kind of unpacking it, right? Yeah. Because it. It was so condensed and it was like, go, 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 go. And then, you know, it comes to an end. And then it's like, probably, yeah, you're still trying to understand, like, what's going through. Um, As we sort of wrap this up, 
what are because I, I understand like you have all these other projects now that you're working on but it sounded like the last time we spoke you also have this itch that maybe you want to start climbing again, again. is that like what what are what are sort of your let's say well first of all maybe also just to, uh, kind of talk a little bit about the projects that you're working on but also okay. kind of yeah if if uh, you do have other peaks in sight um, I say the love for the mountains never goes away, even though sometimes you take a break because you need a break from everything. Mm. Um, I, I'm thinking to climb uh, one peak in, in Himalayas again, but probably in winter conditions, not like in the season time. Uh, Meaning I, when it's harder? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning when it's harder. Uh, I tried to climb Matterhorn, which is the highest uh, the most challenging peak uh, in, in the Alps, mm -hmm. one of the most challenging peak in the Alps. And I tried to climb three times. The first two times I couldn't climb it because um, of the weather. And the third time I tore my, my tendon and I couldn't climb it. Mm -hmm. So um, for some reasons, I'm not going back to Matterhorn soon. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go in Himalayas to, to climb. <laughs> okay. But yes, I want to go back. And as for the projects I'm doing right now, um, I'm trying to organize camps with young people and to teach them how to, you know, what to do when they are on the mountains, how to survive, um, to uh, get them to love mountains and nature because... To get outdoors. Yes, because like, yeah. I don't know, I grew up with sport and with nature, and I think it's the best thing you can teach children is to love sport and nature. So I'm trying to organize camps for this thing, and I'm also involved in a few um, projects with gender equality, of uh, violence against women, and all this kind of stuff. So this is what I'm doing right now. It's almost... I guess, um, yeah, when do you have time to climb already? <laughs> it's one thing, right? That's a good like, question. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, That's why I'm not climbing, <laughs> because I don't have time. <laughs> but, I, yeah, I mean, so then once once you um, decide, so I, I, it sounds like you're setting, you've you set your eyes on this other peak in, in the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. um, how far out do you then kind of get into this? sort of maybe it's a mindset or you start kind of like okay i need to start yeah. training kind of getting my body into that i think the minute you start to see different videos of that peak you're good to go <laughs> so have you already started yeah. watching so okay then you're yeah have you planning. started to kind of like um, hike uh, yes, a little bit I, more? I, yes i started to plan everything i started mm -hmm. to train a little bit more yeah and just see how it goes because if I, if if I climb it if I if I climb it I go in December January okay. so I have time like a year uh -huh. uh, but it goes it goes I mean with fast, that, yeah. all that you're involved in like yeah. time time's probably flying for you right yeah. so but hopefully but I still have some peaks that I want to climb that that are eight thousand meters but maybe in the future okay yeah but then the, at least for the next one you think it's maybe towards the end of this year yes that's okay. my plan. Now let's see how it goes. Yeah. Wow. Um, amazing. Th thank you so much for sharing all that you have today. And like, that's, that's really cool to, to hear from you. Like, I mean, you know, you, I feel like you are definitely an inspiration to like the younger generation of climbers and all climbers, um, let alone like also for, yeah. for, uh, you know, young girls, girls, your age, even older, right. To kind of yeah. like, you know, really seize this kind of, um, well, just to kind of follow your passion. Right. Yeah. So super cool to hear from you and I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down today. Um, let's definitely do this again. Cause I feel yeah. like each peak that you summited is an episode so, on its own yes. uh and also yeah just to kind of understand a little bit more of like some of the projects that you're involved with and yeah your upcoming kind of summit yeah. plans as well so thank you so much thank you for having me <laughs>
All right, Kosova, that was another episode of Never the Right Time. Thank you for tuning in to Urban FM 103.5, 105.5 FM. Thank you.